Okay, Terry. Uh, I, I uh, read the article that was in uh, True Treasure uh, on the web where you were telling a story about an elderly Indian lady that uh, was on the side of the road and she was uh, began talking to you about uh, a place where a treasure was and uh, she yeah. got it a yeah, little yeah. wrong. Yeah, was that 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 the video I did on it when I when I talked to her? That was a video, right? Not an article that I wrote. It was a video. Yeah. Okay. I, I right. Okay. Anyway, uh, the lady that talked to you uh, was correct about the fact that there was a massacre that took place, and uh, it might seem funny that I know the particulars about this and. She didn't. She either didn't want to tell you the particulars, or she really didn't know, and she just heard the story herself. But uh, and and it, it, and it might be that I got it wrong because it was so long ago. But oh, she yes, definitely. So but she definitely told me, you know, that they 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 skin the animals, put gold inside the animals. So she, I definitely remember her telling me that, and maybe she did get it wrong. So, so what happened yeah. then, and how, well, and how do you know? What happened is, uh, during the massacre that took place that she was talking about, uh, there was a number of uh, wagons, little carts that they had, coming up a long, long road up over a, a pass, and the Indians were waiting for them. There was a rock on the upper part of the pass on the, it would have been the north, a huge rock that you can still see from the road, and there was an Indian up there waiting for the Spaniards to get in a certain position, and then he he stood there and waved for the Indians to attack, which they did. Well, uh, they were carrying a large amount of gold bars in metal containers. Each one of those metal containers carried four gold bars, about 27 pounds apiece. So there was just a little over 100 pounds. Now, I was told it was 100 pounds, so okay. I don't think they knew exactly. But uh, she, she mentioned to you that they had uh, killed two burrows and that they skinned them, and then they took the gold and put in the uh, burrow skins and put them in the lake. I don't know if she told me, up. I don't remember if she told me how many burrows, she just said the burrows that I can remember, but so I don't remember her saying really two, but well, she did burrows say burrows. Well, more than one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Burrows is more than one. Yep. But uh, anyway, that didn't happen. Uh, what happened was, is after the massacre took place, the Indians killed a three-day-old calf, and they skinned that calf, and then they took all of the personal belongings that was on the Spaniards, their rings, their necklaces, their crosses, their rosaries, and all of them, you know, it was heavy laden in gold, uh -huh. all that stuff. And there was some, some gold crucifixes, uh, just a, a, a great number of things that the, even the Spaniards had in their pockets. You know, coins. They had they had they had gold doubloons that they had stamped. They had pieces of eight, but mostly it was gold. Uh huh. Well, they killed this three-day-old calf, skinned it, and then they put all these personal belongings in that calf skin of the three-day-old calf. Then they cut. Two long strips, about 20 inches long and about one inch wide, and they wrapped it around the top of the skin that was holding the uh, the jewels and all of that stuff that they put in there. Now, uh, I was asked, "Do you know what that is?" And I said, "No, I don't. This is an Indian that's telling me the story." Uh huh. And uh, 
I said, no, I don't know what that is. He says, that is rawhide. That's rawhide now, he says. And they didn't throw that in the lake. They took it on the east side of the pass, up an old Indian trail, to where there was a cabin and a corral. This was an old Spanish cabin and a corral. Anyway, they took that calf skin and buried it just on the outside part of the corral at the base of a pine tree. And they buried it there. Huh. Now, the gold was in carts. They was pulling them in cart with burrows and, and uh, pulling them up this, these grades, you know. And they had some oxen that was in those in that category also that was pulling them up. Well, they took all of the containers off of the carts and they carried them over to the lake and they threw the gold in the lake. And the container, you know, the containers, not they didn't open them up, they just threw the containers in. And there was 15 of them, I was told. He said, there's 15 containers. So that there's 1,500 pounds of gold in that lake, or I was told. Now, uh, I was trying to think of another story we was going to tie into that. Uh, so, so tell me what the containers were were wooden boxes, metal boxes. No, metal boxes. It was metal boxes with a lid, and inside of those boxes was four gold bars. And they was four inches wide by eight inches long. That's what I was told. And and and, and that lake was was what the Indians called Tadpole Lake or Pollywog Lake or Yeah, or, she told she told you correct on that. I, I think uh, I the said lake, in the video, I think I said pond, but it was lake she told me, not pond. Yeah, well anyway, uh, she was correct on that. This, that lake that they threw the gold in was called uh, Pollywog Lake. That's what it was called by the Indians. And, of course, Pollywogs turned into tadpoles and tadpoles into frogs. Yep. So at the later end of the year, you know, they could hear all the frogs croaking and making a noise. But during the early part of the spring, it was all Pollywogs all around. It. So and uh, they kind of congregated around a spring so this this oh, was could, this was told to you by by an older indian and and is that that who told you this story was an older indian yes so now, I not think, only did he tell I, me the story i think you've told me i think i know this story because i and i think i know who you're talking about because you've told me about these boxes before but i'm not going to say so anyways okay so yeah. go ahead well go he, ahead he not only told me the story he took me there ah. and uh on on the way up the the uh we was down by the the river and uh we crossed over the river and can you say that, can you say what river you want to keep that a secret no it was uh rock Creek. okay it was what great. Okay. Anyway, we crossed the river, and he said, uh, let's go up at the top, he says. Do you know where the area of the big trees are? And I said, yes. But I really didn't know. But I figured if I could see big trees, I would know them, you know. Yeah. So when I got to the top, uh, I seen the big trees. And I said, are those the big trees you're talking about? He said, yes. Where's the lake from there? And I said, oh, it's just about a half a block below us. He said, well, he said, it's just on the other side of those big trees is where the cabin is and the corral. He said, but turn around and let's go down to the lake. So we went on down the road and we got to this lake, and he said, right there, right there, he said, and he's pointing. And I'm sa I said, right there what? What do you mean? He says, gold bars. That's where those gold bars are. He says, you go get one of them buzz boxes, he meant a metal detector. And uh -huh. he said, 
uh, go around the top of the uh, lake and work your way around, he says, and you'll hear them buzz. He says, you'll hear them. And uh, I said, well, okay, I'll do that sometime. But he says, right here is where they threw those in. So, so how did he uh, how did he know about that? Did was he well, involved he in it? Or? With, he lived with the chief. Oh, okay. That's how he knew. Okay. And, and Dick was his uncle. Dick so, Von Rhodes. Yeah, Dick Von Rhodes was his uncle. Okay. And uh, Von Rhodes was the chief, and that's how he knew about this stuff. Okay. So anyway, uh, it it was the truth. He took me there and. Uh, it's, uh, not a story that somebody's made up, actual fact. Did, uh, did uh, you, he, did you he, ask me about something else? Did he ask that? I forgot. Oh, I forget too. Did he ask you, uh, did, did he say anything about the cave or the mine or the cave that they put the gold bars in and slept the, the front off in? Uh, you mean what they, where they got the gold? No, no. You know, the lady told me two stories. One about throwing the gold in, in, in Tadpole oh, Lake. Oh, right. And then the other one was that they put some some gold. There's, there was two different of these raids or massacres or whatever you want to call them. One of them, they, they put the gold either in a mine or a cave, I can't remember, and slept the whole mountain off in front of it. Oh, well, they got up and... and, and uh, Kicked the dirt. Well, I, the I, I don't know. She just said that they 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 put put the gold and in a and I can't remember if she said mine or cave. They put it in there and then they they slept the whole uh, side of the mountain off in front of it. That's all she told me. Yeah, they they had uh, they had black cavalry do that, and they got them up there and and they just kept kicking the dirt above the the mine. It was a mine. Uh huh. And uh, they put the gold back. They, the Spaniards had got in there and got it, and the Indians found out about it and run them down. And then that's, that was that. And <laughs> they uh, got them and took it and put it back. And so that so, was true. So, so that, was that their mine before by the Indians or the Spaniards from way before, or was that something more ancient there? No, it was not mined by the Indians ever. It was a mine that they, whenever they held their dances at the, the bear dance and the sun dance, they would get a young buck and they would put a leather strap around his ne neck with a nugget. And they got that nugget from that mine. And, when, and then they would take the uh, young Indian, take him up in the mountains, and turn him loose with nothing but a knife. And if he returned, then he was, uh, what, whatever they called him after they returned. But, uh, most of them all returned. But when they returned, they took the nugget back and put it back in the mine. So it was kind of a sacred place to him. Uh, uh so it, it, it was nuggets in the mine. It was, it was a, it was a, nugget bearing and and there wasn't smelted gold bars or anything there it was no natural. no no uh -uh. okay no the, the spaniards uh when they uh mined that they they just took pure gold out of it there was no no gold bars okay uh in that uh the uh, uh let me see what he told me about that Well, this was, anyway, this is the mine she was talking about where they took the gold back and put it back in the mine. And then they got these black cavalry and took them up and had them taken, kick. they had boots, you know, uh -huh. and the Indians didn't, but they had them go up above the mine that was on a steep base and sit there and kick it and kick it until the dirt come down and swept over the mine. And it took them quite a while. To do that, I understood. Uh, part of the reason that they could do that was the fact that they cut a bunch of cedar trees 
and they put the cedars in point first into the mine, and then they'd set them back on each other about a foot until they got right up into the center of the of the natural cave where this was. Ah, so they and stepped then they it piled in. rocks on those timbers, okay. and then they kicked the dirt down over them. Okay, would have been a pretty tough, you know. Thing to do is kick dirt over an open opening, but where they shoved the timbers in first, yeah, uh, and put the rocks on them. Then of course they could do that. And uh, the way they got the uh, blacks to do that was they took them in, and there was a bunch of trees that the Spaniards marked while they was in there getting the gold, and they told the uh, these black cavalry that if they would go up and do this, uh, they could cut these, they wanted to have them cut these trees down, and then they could have the trees for timber. And, and they got, you know, the Indian protection. So they did that, you know, it wasn't all just a freebie type deal. Now it seems like I heard, do you know about this? Seems like I heard that uh, some of those um, I guess they was called Buffalo Soldiers, huh? Some of them guys came back in and tried to sneak in and get some of the gold and was caught by the Indians. Do you know? Have you yeah. heard that? Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they caught them. Uh, I believe the report I got from my old Indian source was I think they killed two of them and told the rest of them, you know, get out of here. This is what's going to happen to you if you ever come back, and uh, we'll let you go. I mean, don't you ever tell anybody about this place. Don't you ever come back to this place or bring anybody here. And they didn't because of the two people, the two blacks that they killed. Ah. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, those were both valid. Well, stories. Man, I, I, I appreciate you shedding light on it because, you know, this was something that happened in the early 80s, way, 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 way before I'd met you. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and uh, I, I, you know, I, them stories had always been in my mind. And when I was up there riding my four-wheeler up there and, and that lady says they was up there looking for tadpoles, I remembered that story. Um, so oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's I remember why I, another thing. What? I remember another thing. You told me that she told you that she had been panning gold. Yes. She's and in her truck was a, a trommel yep. that she had purchased. It. She said she paid $5,000 for it. About that, she, she bought and brand she bought new, she bought brand new that four-wheel drive truck and that trommel, and I think she told me the trommel cost around $5,000. When I first seen it in the back of the truck, I thought it was like one of them big salamander heaters or something like that. Yeah. And I was wondering what I was doing yeah. like in there, and I so that's when I went up and looked at it because it was brand new and it's bigger than a salamander heater, and that's when I looked in it, and and you know, seen it wasn't, and then uh, then I went over and found her and talked to her, and you had a little bottle in the end of it, you know, and she's telling me she'd feed the gold into it, and the gold would drop out into that little bottle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that and that's the truth. Uh, I own one of those trommels myself, ah. a four-foot trommel. Uh -huh. It's down in California on a mine, and uh, that was $4,000. So, you know, the $5,000 she told you isn't out of range. Okay. So, anyway, uh, she was telling you that she panned gold on the White Rocks River. Yes. Correct? Yep. Yeah, and... There was a, a, a lady named Sonia, a woman named Sonia, and her father told me about the place that they pan gold on the White Rocks. And uh, it's still there today. Uh, there's, you know, it's not on any Indian land. It's, it's uh, there for anybody to go up and get if they know where to, know where to find it. Can you give a clue to it, or are you keeping that a secret? No, I, I'm not ever going to go up. I'm too old now. I'm 81 years old, and uh, 
I thought many times if somebody was interested in going up, I'd tell them where it, where it was, you know, uh -huh. and they could go up and find it. Uh, there's a clue on how to find it, and it has to do with quake and ask trees. Okay. So if anybody is interested in going up and trying to uh, find it, have them give me a call. Okay. And I'll be glad to tell them. All right. Hey, also, she told me that there was a, there was a, a, a cave or a mine or something there not far from where I met her there on the White Rocks River. And that they'd found an old uh, Spanish guy in armor there, and and he had a rifle, and and maybe she might have said a, a, the rifle was a blunderbust. I, I seems like that's what she said, but I can't really remember. Um, do you know anything about that? Well, yeah, there's uh, stories about an Indian that was placed in the in the mine that we was talking about that was caved in on. And, uh, you know, the kick, the dirt kicked over the oh, front. Yeah. There was a, there was a Spaniard that has, that was placed inside of the mine, leaning up against the, up against the wall, and there was a rifle there with him. One of the Spanish rifles. That's the place she was talking about. That's why she knew about it, because it's that same place. Ah. Okay. Okay, so. So uh, if 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 anybody's interested in looking for that man, I'll I'll uh, get you get them in touch with you, and we'll work out some kind of agreement where man they they do you right. <laughs> yeah, or they can call you whatever they okay, and you can you know I get a little deal in the email once in a while from a a couple of guys that want to know how I'm doing. Uh, whether I could give them some information on something to go to. Uh, I just get so busy uh, out when I can get out with my equipment that I've got. Uh, it's, uh, I just never really get back in touch with them. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, anyhow. Well. That's what I can tell you about. June. I appreciate that. <laughs> and well, I, and I, uh, like I say, it's the truth. I got no reason to right. fib or tell stories like somebody else I know. <laughs> but, uh, these places were actual places told to me by uh, Indians that were my age. Now, I was a young man when they was telling me that. You know, I was 25 years old or so, and... And uh, the Indians I was talking to, old Carnes LaRose and Wobbin, and uh, just a bunch of them, you know. Uh huh. I like to say, Sonia's father, and uh, he lived right there in White Rocks, and uh, that's where she lives now. And she would probably be close to my age if she was still alive, but her dad died. Long time ago. Oh yeah, that's been a nice guy. Oh, I know of another place too that uh, he knew about, and Sonia told me this: that she says my dad, when I was younger, or about twelve years old, used to load me and my brother in a buckboard because he was watching us. Uh, I don't know what her mother was doing or something. But anyway, they would ride up this trail up through these black cedars above White Rocks. Uh huh. And she said that he would, many times during the period of, oh, let's say between the time they was eight years old and maybe 12 in that area, she said they would ride up to a bridge. And, and then he would say, you wait here. And, then he would go down a little draw where the bridge was. So you couldn't mistake the draw, you know. Uh -huh. And he would go down, and then he'd come back, and he would tell Sonia and her and the boy, it's all right, everything's all right, still covered. Huh. So uh, I went up there and found the bridge. There was no problem. You just have to know where, you know, right. in those cedars, those black cedars. But... Uh, 
uh, there's going to be a pretty good cash in there. I don't think it was a mine. Although, uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, wasn't Henry. The Wapsock? Uh, I'm trying to think of his first name. Can't think of it. Anyway. His last name was Wapsock? Yeah, he's dead. Uh-huh, okay. He's dead now. Anyway, uh, I was at his house with his wife. She was a white woman. Very, very nice woman. Anyway, we was at his house talking to to him, and he, he had 29 horses there at the time. And he said, anytime you want a horse, you let me know. We'll have to shoe a couple of them, and you can ride up. Uh, in these places. He said, let me tell you a place where I found gold just on top of the ground. Huh. He says, I was up in these cedars up here, and he pointed where they were. And he says, I was walking up there, coming down, and he says, all of a sudden, something caught my eye and glistened. And he says, right around the trunk of the tree, he said, there was just looked like hundreds of small gold nuggets all over the ground. And he says, it looked like the dirt had pushed up there and, and cracked, and there was kind of a gray rock there. Huh. And these nuggets were all in that rock. Well, I went up once and tried to look for it, but I'll tell you, that is a big area, and there are thousands of those trees. Yeah. Well, well, I only made one attempt, but I know where he pointed. Well, well, I think I've told you this before. I, I ran into a guy once that, that had a gray rock. It kind of looked like a pumice. It was gray and, and had four holes in that, but it had little BBs of gold all through it. And he told me he picked that up off the Indian Reservation. The time didn't really think anything about it, and then years later got got uh, decided maybe he'd go back and try and find that, and he never could find out find where he was at. He could never find it again. But it was a gray, it was a gray that had little little gold BBs all through it. Yeah, uh, that, that gray rock is very, very particular with the gold uh, in that area. It's in a gray rock, and even the Rhodes mine is in a gray rock. You knew, it, it was in gray. You knew that, didn't you? I didn't know that, uh-uh. Well, Abe Powell, who was a good friend of mine, that was Kate Broke's nephew, uh -huh. he told me on many occasions that Caleb was getting gold from the one mine in a big gray vein. And so nobody knows what that gray vein is, you know. But uh, that's what it's associated with, that, that rich gold. Ah. Uh -huh. Okay. I'd forgot about that, uh, or him, or he said he found that, and, and so many years ago, been, been over 30 years since, you know, I talked to him, he died maybe 10 years after that. Uh -huh. I used to go down to the cafe there in Roosevelt and have coffee with him and talk with him. That's Abe, and, uh, Abe Powell? Yeah, there uh, was a guy named Archie, an Indian named Archie, and he was when I was there. He was about ninety-one years old, and he heard me talking with uh, a couple of Indians that were my friends in there. And when I got up to leave, he motioned me over to the bar, and he says, uh, "How would you like to go with her to her on a ride with me?" And I, I said, well, where do you want to go? And uh, he said, my name is Archie Sherlock. He says, uh, I think I know where some gold is. And he says, you, I, it, you evidently know what it looks like. And if you'll go with me, he says, we'll ride up the road. He says, but I'm going to drive. And he says, you're going to have a lot of cars honking at me because... I only drive about 20 miles an hour. And he <laughs> says, they're all, all mad at me, but I ain't going to drive any faster. 
He says, we'll go up there. And he says, it's not far off the road. And he says, we'll, we'll go up if you want to. And I said, well, I sure can't do it today, Archie. I've got my day all planned and even tomorrow. And I says, it'll have to be the next time I come up. And he started talking to me about uh, a bridge and a tree, a dead tree on a bridge. And in the trunk of that tree was a, a map. And he says, that map, I've seen it and put it back. He says, but it says gold in the red ledges. And so that's another thing I never did go and see whether or not that map was there. Uh. But anyway, it was old Archie Surawap that told me he was an old Indian. Like I said, he was 91 years old when I knew him. So. You know, you, well, was, you, you was telling me one other thing back at the, at the lake. Back at the lake, uh, um, if I remember right, you was telling me that there was a topped tree that you seen when you was there. Yeah, uh, where yeah the, where there the, was a, a where, pine tree. Right. There was a pine tree there that had been topped. And I told you, what do you know about a topped tree, Terry? And he said, well, yeah, I heard Caleb Rhodes top them. And I said, that's right. I said, now that tree's topped. And I don't know if there's a mine close by there or what it is. Or if he knew uh, about the I bars, just, bars in, the, in the lake, huh? No, I don't think so. Caleb okay. Rhodes never, never bothered with that stuff. He may have known about it or something. But anyway, that's about it. If I think of anything else, I'll give you a call. June, man, I, have, I appreciate you getting with me and and filling out the rest of the story for me and 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 like i say if uh, anybody's interested you know in taking june up on this or you go searching with with the clues that he has given man yeah. treat old, i wouldn't be treat able to treat old old june them, right. tell them where treat treat old june right man <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right hey I'll you later then uh, all right june i appreciate it thanks okay take care